It was in 1263 that Colin of Kintail saved King Alexander III from a charging stag. And from that point on, the Mackenzie clan, the Mackenzie family, were given royal permission to use the 12-pointed stag as their emblem. A lucky charm of sorts, something they held on to through the years when eventually Mackenzie's settled here and started their own distillery. A distillery that makes a refined and beautiful whiskey well known around the world. I am of course talking about the Dalmore. I'm now delighted to be in the whiskey maker's room at the Dalmore talking to Greg Glass, a perfect case of nominative determinism, perhaps, for you are the master whiskey maker and blender at the Dalmore. Thank you, uh, thank you for, for coming up and, and seeing us up here in the Highlands. So how ingrained is Dalmore into the landscape here? How important is this part of Scotland to Dalmore's identity? Well, the Dalmore means uh, the big meadow, which is exactly where we're, we're here, and we've got beautiful, uh, fertile farming land in this area. And um, the Dalmore is very much a, a sort of old school style distillery, uh, not just in terms of our, our, our approach to working here in the community, uh, but also the style of spirit that we make and, and characteristics of our whiskey. Dalmore is a beloved brand here in Scotland, but worldwide as well, very recognisable. In short, how do you make a Dalmore whisky? Creating the spirit to start off with is a, an art in its own right, and we've got a lot of unique parts of the process that we have here. So right the way through to um, the, the, the milling, through to the, the washbacks that we have here, we have eight Oregon pine washbacks, and uh, we do a fermentation about 50 to 60 hours, um, and what that helps to do is promote uh, a lovely, robust, character and fruitiness, um, but one of the most unique things is our distillation practice. So our still house is really unique. The stills themselves are big, they're bulbous. Each of them are, are slightly different shapes and sizes, and we have an un, what we call an unbalanced system in our still house, and that actually creates a lot of unique characteristics in the spirit style. You'll notice in our, our stills, we have flat tops. Um, it almost looks like they've been sort of clipped with a pair of scissors. Yeah, absolutely, and that helps uh, to, to create what we call reflux, and that helps to create a, a, a different characteristics, sometimes lighter elements within the, the spirit itself, but what we really want to have is a robust spirit style. Mm -hmm. So we would class ourselves as a medium to heavy style mm. uh, altogether. But some of the other unique things are our water jackets on our spirit stills, which also helps to promote an element of, of reflux within there. And we then also have our external condensers on our spirit stills. The condensers are actually uh, horizontal mm. rather than vertical, which is typical of most distilleries. And that actually almost mimics uh, an old traditional worm tub mm. style of uh, condensation. So we have all these unique different things within the distillation itself and mm. creating that, that wonderful spirit. And the DNA of the spirit, we're looking for that, that medium to heavy style. We have mm. some cereal notes coming through, rich, robust, fruity notes as well, yep. um, which then helps us in the, in the maturation. One aspect is that we've actually got different generations of people who've got family connections to the distillery and again going back to our place within the community that's really important and, and so those skills have been handed down over generations and also um, Richard Patterson our, our master distiller mm -hmm. as well having been working with Dalmore for over 50 years mm -hmm. is also that passing on of that knowledge and the ways of doing things. So you have that continuity of experience but also uh, in continuity in equipment sometimes because some of the pieces that you have in the still room, they've been here for quite a while. 1839 is when we were founded and so a, a lot of the equipment has been replicated from that period of time or even directly swapped out or even still exists here at, at the distillery. So we have a, a great sort of combination of sort of newer pieces of equipment but it's largely based off of those old uh, traditional pieces. So that gets us up to the point where the Dalmore spirit is fresh and new, not yet whiskey. But to get it to the point of being whiskey, it has to be matured. And something that Dalmore is really well known for is using sherry casks. So, so we start off with that really robust, what I would class as an old school Highland spirit style. Mm. And really you need to pair that with um, the correct sort of oak 
type of cask in previous use as well. So we tend to look at these heavier styles of sherry, for example. Also port is a, a, another one, but also individual wines from around the world from top winemakers. And really what we're trying to do is keep to the heart and soul of what we're creating at the distillery and really elevate that and enhance it. So we have a cask enhancement program which is multifaceted. Typically what we do is we'll start off with great quality um, ex-bourbon casks, American white oak, for its initial part of its life and then we'll transfer that into different styles of casks um, thereafter. And uh, our relationship with Gonzales Bias is, has been going on for over a hundred years uh, at the Dalmore. We're in Hereth at least twice a year uh, in normal times mm -hmm. and um, it's important for us hand selecting casts. One of the, the aspects of our, our maturation policy is, is looking um, at older styles of casks. So a lot of these bodega casks have been in a bodega for, for many decades and even over a hundred years in many cases, um, as well as us determining the, the wood types from individual cooperages around Spain for creating casks bespoke to us that are, we're then using in uh, sherry production in, in Spain that come to, to us at the distillery. But the Gonzales casks and sherry butts that we use um, are, are aged um, antique styles. Mm. So for example, Methuselah, which is 30 year sherry. Um, these are very old, rare casks that we have here mm. at, uh, at the Dalmore. So this is worth remembering that for these whiskies, which can in themselves be quite old, 12, 15, 18, 20 plus years, but they're spending this time maturing in a cask that already has a great vintage of holding very old sherry as well. So combined ages of um, 60 plus years in some cases. Yeah, and, and then in terms of our enhancement, we're then looking to finish that whiskey for many, many years, often many decades uh, as well. So we like the whiskey to have as much time as possible to re really reach its peak. From the theory to the practical, there are two Dalmores sitting in front of me here. What have their respective casks done for these two whiskies? Yeah, well the first uh, whisky we've got here is our uh, Dalmore 18 year old. Mm. Now this is a, um, has been uh, matured initially in uh, ex-bourbon casks and then we've finished this in Methuselah sherry. Mm. Now Methuselah we're using here as, a, as, a, as an entire finish within the recipe and I'll, I'll see what you think about this one. Oh, okay. Actually, slang you. Really, you should be picking up that beautiful sherry influence of the, the, the nuttiness, mm -hmm. the dried fruit. Um, often uh, people will pick up um, sort of raisins, you know, sherry soaked raisins, some chocolatey notes and orange notes. It's very indulgent. Um, the the flavours are full. They linger for a very long time and it's very very rich indeed and if we go back to the the actual new make itself here um, what you'll see is um, I mentioned about the robust nature of the spirit that we're making um, but even within the spirit you get that lovely cereal note richness um, and also within the initial aging you pick up lots of citrus notes mm -hmm. dark chocolate and spice characteristics so this, this is the, the, the fresh stuff, uh, not yet a whiskey, 18 years back in time from this glass. And what, what strength is this one at? So this is uh, just over 63%. Just yeah. over 63, so. Yeah. Careful slange. It's not fighting. It's got a lot of body to it, it um, and richness, um, that sort of um, slight spiciness in the aftertaste, but there's a lot of fruit characteristics, both sort of dark fruit and uh, rich citrus notes. Mm -hmm. Now we um, enhance that through the initial maturation with bourbon. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you an example of uh, the bourbon here. This one is about 15 years in first full ex bourbon. And in many cases, you know, that's a whiskey that's ready to release, but it's, it's pretty rare to find a Dalmore that's just Ex bourbon. Uh, usually, the colours are about as uh, as deep and dark as these. Before the sherry cask has its effect, you get this nice kind of straw gold colour, and that's very vibrant. Yeah. And you should, you'll tell there's still that beautiful depth and complexity even within um, that um, that straight bourbon style. 
And as we go on to the, the 18, when you return back to the 18, you can see why the, the, this enhancement with these antique old styles of sherry really helps to build in more depth, complexity, and balance as well with that original mm. um, house style that we have from the spirit and through that initial mat maturation. See, I would, I would have got impatient. I would have said, yeah, this, this, this is fine as it is. You, well, why, why do any more to it? But then um, I guess the answer is it's in this yeah. glass. And this is why it's really important that we're monitoring the casks in our warehousing here. For example, warehouse two is a dunnage warehouse. So we're very careful in locating uh, particular stocks in particular warehouses for monitoring purposes, but also for the individual warehouse conditions, which mm -hmm. can have a, uh, play a big role in the, the character at the end. Well, you have the, the Firth right outside your window, which I imagine creates quite a unique microclimate mm -hmm. for Dalmore's maturation. I'm guessing that's quite a big part of how the whiskey ends up uh, maturing. Absolutely, and, and a lot of our older uh, original warehousing is closer to uh, the Firth itself, mm -hmm. so there's a lot more uh, exposure to the conditions that we, we have here. And then the next whiskey we have is called uh, King Alexander mm -hmm. uh, the, the Third, uh, harking back to uh, 1263, uh, Colm of Kintail rescuing uh, King Alexander the Third from a from a stag, and um, it was bequeathed upon the the Mackenzies, um, the twelve pointer stag, mm -hmm. and that still adorns the the bottles that we have. And uh, this is actually a, very much a unique uh, whiskey in terms of the that cask enhancement that we do. Um, so this is the, the world's only uh, six finished whiskey uh, that we have, um, which is incorporating um, some Methuselah within there, but we are also using uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, highly selected casks, um, Marsala, Madeira as well. We're also mm -hmm. using some uh, fine hand selected ex bourbon casks as well. And we're combining these uh, along with port. Um, and it actually adds all these different dimensions of flavors. So this is one of my particular favorites mm -hmm. of, um, uh, of the Dalmore. So here, a lot of people will pick up um, sort of rich dark forest fruit characteristics, um, sort of uh, almost like figs or balsamic fig, uh, figs showing an element of age. So you get that beautiful uh, robustness, the dark fruit uh, flavours coming through, the figs, uh, the other dried fruits in there. Mm -hmm. King Alexander is one that's quite complex for us to make, but it's it's worth that that effort to to get that dedication. But every expression that we make at the Dalmore is what 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 we are aiming for in perfection. Mm -hmm. And so each of them really do have a distinctive characteristic of their own. And some of them will utilize similar styles of cast, but mm -hmm. what we do is we base it purely on the the unique provenance of each cask, and that's why the dedication that we take and time in monitoring and selecting casks right the way from the original producer, and often you're going back to some of the original wood way back in the process, even before it goes into, for example, wineries that we're partners with. And, uh, you know, whiskey's a, a, a natural, living, breathing thing um, when it comes to, you know, the uniqueness of the harvest for the barley coming in to the distillery, but also through that maturation. Wow. Well, I have to confess, I've completely forgotten there's a camera there watching all of this. I've just been having a nice <laughs> afternoon. Um, but I think it may well be worth seeing the process in action, seeing some Dalmore quietly maturing in uh, one of these warehouses. But that is something that we will save for part two of this exciting two-parter episode. So for now, I'd like to thank you so much, uh, Greg Glass, for taking me through these wonderful whiskies and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.